to present the J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award. Please welcome JFN board member and 2013 laureate of the award, Charlene Seidel. Thank you, good afternoon. I am so excited to tell you about a most worthy and outstanding philanthropic professional who is this year's J.J. Greenberg Award winner. First about the award. The J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award honors foundation professionals engaged in grant making aged 40 and under who have demonstrated extraordinary leadership in Jewish philanthropy. The award was created and endowed by his family, friends, and colleagues as a memorial for Jonathan Joseph Greenberg following his untimely death in a traffic accident in 2002 when he was just 36. The award is presented annually to an individual who, like JJ, has exemplified through words and deeds the highest of Jewish values and the relentless pursuit of excellence in all aspects of life. I want you to know that we heard from JJ's parents, Rabbi Yitz and Blue Greenberg. They are completely delighted about this year's winner. Unfortunately, due to illness, they could not make it today, but we know that they are here in spirit. So often, this introduction is a serious summation of the winner's always amazing, exceedingly excellent, laudable, and extensive accomplishments. When I had the honor of receiving the prize a few years ago, I felt that the articulate introduction was like an elegant perfume, delicious if inhaled, deadly if ingested. And so I decided to take a different approach this year, an approach that I find extremely befitting for our winner. This incredible individual is known for a sense of humor that is used strategically and thoughtfully. I marvel at how the winner's positive, charismatic, and engaging disposition immediately puts people at ease, draws them out, and truly makes them feel like the best version of themselves. This is a remarkable quality, particularly in the philanthropic sector, where we can often take ourselves a bit too seriously, missing critical information shared by those we are trying to help in the process. So in just a very few minutes, I want to walk you through the life of our winner as so we can learn a little more about how such a remarkable professional came to be. In other words, this is your life. All right. This year's J.J. Greenberg Award winner was literally born with a smile on his face. As one of our colleagues said, to be able to spend time with him, to learn, brainstorm, and laugh together, these are all precious gifts to those who are lucky enough to call our winner a colleague and a friend. Like J.J. Greenberg himself, from a young age, this leader-to-be drew people to him and around him in a most regal manner. This year's award winner possesses an almost superhuman work ethic reminiscent of his early attempts to fly. In fact, some of us privately do refer to him as Superman, just as his younger self dreamed. His genuine curiosity about people's strengths and what makes them thrive was reflected early. And while he didn't quite become Dick Tracy, serving the Jewish people can sometimes feel like a kind of forensic science anyway. This photo clearly demonstrates our winner's superb ability to spot talent and forge innovative philanthropic partnerships. <laughs> Even then, our winner knew who to have at his back. The colleagues at the foundation where this year's award winner works said among many other effusive praises, he makes being Jewish fun, sexy, and meaningful. And young people wanna be part of everything he touches. Well, I think this picture says it all. <laughs> Fast forward a few years and you see how our award winner is so often at the center of a crowd. 
Yet, if you observe this incredible leader a little more closely, as I have, you see that like J.J. Greenberg, he first focuses on who is at the edges of the crowd and bringing them in more closely, making them feel included and welcomed. He leads, navigating extremely complex professional situations with humor, humility, and a rare personal and professional grace. So if you haven't already guessed, many of you will realize who our winner is with the next slide. So let me announce now that this this year's winner is the one of a kind, supremely talented, Moshe Dayan? No, of course not. Our winner is the executive director of the ROI community, accompanied by Golda Meir in this picture, otherwise known as Yael Korda. Justin is known, at least where I live in Encinitas, for his extremely innovative Purim costumes. But I think that reflects his orientation to innovation, excellence, and never resting on his laurels in all matters. Justin is literally never afraid to try new things. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> a year and a half ago, Justin and his family moved from Jerusalem for two years to live in S San Diego. He works from the North County Hub at Leash Tag Commons and has become such an inspiring and inspired mentor and friend to everyone in our community. This is indicative of how Justin builds relationships, masterfully, with much sensitivity, building trust, and earning complete respect despite the unusual Purim costumes quickly. Justin's parents are here today. I think we should give them some applause. And we thought that you both might want to see where he gets his inspiration. This is the view from Justin's office. Well, have fun back in Jerusalem, Justin. So I know you are all eager to hear from our winner, and so am I, so let me wrap up by quoting our good friend Yoni Gordis. Yoni told me, who knew J.J. Greenberg very well, he told me that perhaps the only regret I can offer here, Yoni said, as someone who was privileged to know J.J. Greenberg, is that Justin and J.J. did not have more than a passing meeting. They were kindred spirits in their humor, their caring for the Jewish future, and their humility. I know of no one who could be a better recipient of this award than Justin. We at Leash Tag and so many of your colleagues, Justin, heartily agree. JFN friends, please join me in welcoming Justin to the stage and congratulating him on receiving the 2017 J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award. Thank you, thank you, Charlene, for the most embarrassing <laughs> introduction. And I'm sure there's a long list of people that I have to get back for supplying you with all that evidence. Thank you very much for your generous words. I'm truly honored to accept the J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award. There isn't a person in this room who hasn't been influenced in some way by Blue and Yitz Greenberg. This award is such a beautiful way that we remember JJ. Fifteen years have passed since he left us abruptly, and his memory is very much alive in so many. Each recipient that has stood be before me either knew or learned deeply about who JJ was and what he stood for and we are inspired by his values and we act with intention on that inspiration from JJ. I never got to know JJ personally, although we met a couple of times at some of those initial birthright meetings. When I first learned about this award, I sought out to learn more about him. Besides for the amazing stories 
and eulogies and content that I found online, I had the chance to speak with a number of colleagues that knew JJ personally. One of them, our friend and past JJ Greenberg Award recipient, Felicia Herman, who's here today, taught me about JJ in a way that has impacted me tremendously over the years, from how I see myself, to how I approach our work, to who I strive to be. Felicia taught me about three pillars that JJ embodied. Kindness, humility, and optimism. Kindness. Kindness is going that extra step or that extra mile to help, to recognize, to encourage, to restore, or to bring somebody dignity. Humility. Humility is being self-aware wanting to lift up those around you. And optimism, in many ways, our strength or weakness as individuals and as a people is in the belief that it can and it will be better. For me, these pillars have become a framework for living and working, and I stand here before you today filled, overflowing actually with gratitude. Not a day goes by that I don't appreciate my lot in being able to pursue a career in kindness, humility, and optimism. That this is all made possible by extreme generosity on the part of donors and foundations, all who have the choice of where to put their resources. I am grateful for all those opportunities and experiences that I had as a kid and a young student activist where I was impacted tremendously by Jewish giving and I am proud and grateful to be paying it forward as a Jewish professional with the greatest job and the greatest team in the world. At ROI Community and at the Schusterman Family Foundation, the organization that I'm honored to serve, we are privileged to have two passionate and visionary women as our leaders and role models. Lynn Schusterman and Stacy Schusterman live and give with clear values that I am proud to uphold. They are guided by the late Charlie Schusterman and the words of advice he left behind on pieces of note paper. Those words are alive today and they continue to guide Lynn and Stacy and in turn all of us. Charlie taught us not to be afraid to drill dry holes, to take calculated risks. He said, we should not be afraid to push forward with 80% of the best available information rather than waiting for the full 100% and perhaps missing the opportunity altogether. Something just flew in my ear. <laughs> I was thinking about that quote last Sunday on Purim, about acting on that moment before we miss the chance altogether. And that amazing line in chapter four of the book of Esther, where Esther realizes that this is her moment the power of that moment is something that every person and certainly every leader can relate to in their own way. You remember the story. Mordechai has this beautifully scripted line of optimism. He says, look, Esther, the Jewish people, the Jewish people are going to get saved either way. It's all going to be good. The question is, what's your part in making it happen? And maybe this is your moment to step up and lead. And then Esther's epic response, she says, okay, I'm gonna take this big step out of my comfort zone, but I wanna know that everyone's with me. So much of the work that we do at ROI and Schusterman, but really all of us, is about creating Esther moments for thousands of people in the hopes that one moment of stepping up will lead to another and another. As I listened and read through letters and stories that people recounted to me about JJ, with his humble pride, he made everyone that he connected with feel special. JJ was there for so many people in their Esther moment. We say it takes a village to advance the kind of change that we want to see in the world. I am blessed to count so many of you as my teachers and my partners, my rabbis and my friends. 
Thank you to my team and to my colleagues at the Schusterman Family Foundation, those in the room and not. Thank you to Sandy Cardin, our president, to Lisa Eisen, our vice president, to my partner in Hebruta and managing the ROI community, Noah Gorlin, and to so many others who are here um, in this room and not in this room. There's too many to thank by name, but truly, you all inspire me and push me on a daily basis to strive for excellence in our work. I want to acknowledge and thank all of you throughout the Jewish philanthropic word, world who have offered your friendship, advice, and partnership over the years. The staff of the Jewish Funders Network, to my colleagues who nominated me for this award. I have been so incredibly lucky to develop relationships with so many of you across the globe in Israel, in America, in Latin America, in Europe, including dozens of ROI members who are here today representing philanthropic foundations and as presenters here at the JFN. I hope to have an opportunity to give you each a hug in the hallways today and tomorrow. Thank you to my greatest teachers, my family, my wife Yael, whom I met thanks to Birthright, and I, there have, and I therefore have many of you and your foundations to thank, and my three kids, Noam, Talia, and Nadav, who are constantly teaching me lessons in kindness, humility, and optimism. One of those lessons is how much of a thankless job parenting is. And on that note, I want to sincerely thank my parents, Jerry and Stephen, for the way they raised me and encouraged me on my path. Thank you for modeling parenthood, and thank you for making the trip to Atlanta to be here with me today. In closing, we see from Esther the value and importance of stepping out of one's comfort zone. And we see what positive encouragement can do for someone. I can think of several formative moments in my life where I was given that kind of kind, motivating vote of confidence, that feeling of you can do it, and how those moments molded who I am and the work that we do. At ROI, our focus is on young Jewish leaders in their 20s and 30s, helping to develop and prime them for greater Jewish leadership. But I think that to a large degree, all of us, all of us, whether we're focused on early childhood, on teens, on college students, on young adults or young professionals or young donors or leaders or followers or privileged influencers or the underprivileged and vulnerable, we are all looking to give people their Esther moment that will propel them to become better people and leaders creating more positive change with kindness, humility, and optimism. Thank you. Thank you.